All right, so I know that we already dug into the recent Pew Religious Landscape data a bit, but it's awesome. So we're going to revisit it again this week because last week we kind of buried the lead. See, the real fun isn't so much in the numbers as it is in the Cory Banthic premortem autopsy that Christian leaders are responding with. So from what I've seen so far, you basically have two camps. you got the conservatives and the progressives. Now, the conservatives are arguing that the decline in American Christianity is the result of churches watering down the message of Jesus and being too willing to embrace evolving social mores. The progressives are arguing the exact opposite, right? They're saying that the church's outdated stance on homosexuality and premarital sex and contraception and stuff is alienating younger generations and driving people away from the faith. Now, both sides can turn to these same numbers and bolster their case, right? The evangelicals, the most traditionally conservative segment of American Christianity, they've seen the smallest decrease of the major denominations, so they would argue that the more traditional your message, the less potent the exodus. Of course, if you're on the progressive side, you could also point out that if people were leaving the church because it was too conservative, obviously the more progressive people would leave first. But as interesting as the questions that they're asking are far more intriguing are the questions that they're not asking. Because ultimately, this is like watching one group argue that they're not marketing the turd sandwich correctly, while the other group argues that they're putting too much ketchup on it. Because nobody in the entire religious landscape is saying, you know, it could be that we're just wrong. You, you know, look at the Catholic Church freaking the fuck out in Ireland. They, they're looking over this gay marriage referendum, trying to figure out where they lost control. And they're arguing about this marketing strategy and that mobilization effort. And none of them are stopping to say, hey, maybe we're just wrong. Maybe gay people really are people that deserve equal protection under the law. You know, maybe we've devoted our entire lives to random, uninformed, antiquated concepts of morality that have all but crippled our ability to remain relevant in a world where anybody could just hop online and figure out how full of shit we are at the speed of light. Now, it's obvious why they're not saying that. They can't. Even if they thought that, most of them would just naturally assume that was the devil. He'd slip into their brain long enough to leave that horrible blasphemous thought, and they would banish it without consideration. Now, obviously, not all of them can compartmentalize that well, which is why the churches are losing leaders at nearly the same pace as parishioners, but they can't say that stuff out loud. They can't write it down. They have to suggest like a, a two-for-one deal on Turd Sandwich Tuesday or something because otherwise they have to admit that they're in a battle they can no longer win. I mean, think about just how wrong they are in this thing. We all know that correlation doesn't equal causation, but a complete lack of correlation can pretty much rule causation out, right? And the decrease in religious adherence doesn't track with liberal or conservative thrusts in the church's message. You know, Catholics were hemorrhaging members under Benedict. They're hemorrhaging members under Frankfurter. It doesn't track with marketing strategies or talking points or political focus, but it does track with free access to information. Across the globe and across time, the less restricted the flow of information is in a society, the less religious that society becomes. Again, that doesn't equal causation, but it's automatically a more plausible answer than all this nonsense that doesn't even correlate. Of course, this introspective futility is great for us, right? I mean, the, the Black Knight claiming his amputated arm is but a flesh wound is only problematic if you're on his side. The more time they spend debating between these two wrong answers, the longer it's going to take them to get to the right one, because the church still thinks that they're dealing with the same kind of problem they've dealt with in the past. You know, they've seen social progress outpace them before. In the end, they always begrudgingly see a few of their long-held beliefs, they redefine their message, they start pretending that they were the ones pushing for abolition this whole time, and they carry on as something a little less relevant and a little less obtrusive than they were before. And that's the kind of crisis that they think they're dealing with now. They're fighting internally about whether it's time to get on board with masturbation and cohabitation, well, you know, whether they need a revival or a reformation. But ultimately, we're watching Nero tune his fiddle because this time it's different. This time society hasn't just outpaced you, it's outgrown you.